around the globe. Hot, fresh, balanced and objective. On Unity. Welcome and thank you for joining us on Unity News Hour. Today is Saturday, the 11th of February 2023, and it's equivalent to 20th of Rajab 1444 after Hijra. The headlines Be involved on election day. U.S. enjoys envoy or Nigerians. Buhari's government consults Turkey over a quake. Peter Obi in Yobe says he has ideas to fix Nigeria. And on the foreign scene, Ethiopia Orthodox Church Ethiopia Orthodox Church split, social media restricted. And lastly, in sport, Manchester City Pep Guardiola's safe club condemned over alleged breaches. And those were the headlines. And for details and more of the stories, I am Rukayet Sani Ibrahim. With less than 15 days to the 2023 election, the United States Ambassador to Nigeria, Mary Leonard, on Friday urged all registered voters to be involved on election day to choose the right leaders of the country. Leonard stated this in her election OPED titled, The elections are almost here. It's up to you to choose your next leaders. The envoy said the United States had confidence that the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, will conduct credible and transparent elections. Applauding the use of bimodal voter authentication system on election day, she said the U.S. government applauds the act, which formal, formally granted INEC the ability to use beavers to accredit voters and transmit election results electronically. Leonard emphasized that the U.S. does not support any single candidate, adding that they have taken steps to impose visa restrictions against those responsible or complicit in undermining the democratic process in the past and remain willing to do so again going forward. She therefore advised all registered voters to go out and cast their votes. Nigerian government on Friday commiserated with the government of Turkey over the devastating earthquake which occurred in the country on Monday. Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Omar Farouk, who paid a condolence visit to the Turkish ambassador to Nigeria, Hidayat Bayraktar, on behalf of the federal government, described the earthquake and its aftermath as devastating. She prayed for God's strength in their trying time. Responding the ambassador to Turkey to Nigeria, Hidayat Bayraktar, appreciated the government of Nigeria and the minister for their condolences and prayed for continued peaceful collaboration between the two countries. The permanent secretary of the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Dr. Nasser Sanu Gwarzo, Director of Humanitarian Affairs, Alhaji Ali Grema, the Director General of the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, Ahmed Mustafa Habib, and the Special Assistant to the President on Humanitarian Affairs Group Captain Shiohu Sadiq were among those who accompanied the minister on the condolence visit. A medical expert, Professor Orika Moba Obunga, says that sexually transmitted infections, SCIS, remains a big problem in Nigeria and some instances when it's untreated can lead to long term irreversible outcomes like cancer, infertility, and blindness. The center representing Taraba South, Dr. Emmanuel Bwacha, has been declared winner of the rerun of the All Progressives Congress APC governorship primary election for Taraba State. Chairman of the Electoral Committee, General Tukur Buratai, retired while announcing the result of the primary, which held in Jalingo, disclosed that Bwacha pulled 778 votes to defeat his closer, close challenger, Senator Yusuf A. Yusuf who scored five votes out of the 796 total votes cast in the exercise. Boratai earlier announced that a total of 840 delegates were expected to participate in the exercise, but only 796 were accredited. In his reaction, Boratai described the result as a confirmation that people of the state were truly yearning for good governance. Boratai, while commending General Boratai, the APC, and the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, 
for a credible exercise, also thank the delegates for supporting him and promise to ensure dividends of democracy for the people if elected the next governor of Taraba State. The presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, says he has ideas that will fix Nigeria if elected. He, however, said his ambition is not fueled by desperation. Mr. Obi, who spoke during an interaction with journalists in Damaturu, the Yobi state capital, blamed bad leadership for the insecurity in the country. Mr. Obi also visited the Emir of Damaturu, Shehu Hashimi, and the members of the town's Emirate Council. He decried the state of insecurity in the country and how the government of the day has neglected the common people while promising to reverse the trajectory when elected president come February 25, 2023. Yobe, he noted, will become an agricultural exporting state in the country as his government will invest heavily in agriculture. The National Working Committee NWC of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has expelled former Governor of Enugu State Senator Chimaroke Namani and six others over alleged anti-party activities. Recall that Senator Namani has, was last month suspended by the party. The PDP NWC at the end of its 566 meeting disclosed this on Friday in a statement by its National Publicity Secretary Kola Ologbodian. According to the statement, the party approved the expulsion owing to anti-party activities and other grave offences in violation of the constitution of the PDP as amended in 2017. Others expelled from the party include Honorable Chris Ogbu, Imo State, Ajijola Latif Oladimeji of Ekiti Central, Olayinka James Olaleri of Ekiti Central 2, and Fayoshi Oluwa Jomi Loju, John Ekiti Central 1. Akeleri Oloyinka Ekiti North 1 and Emiola Adeniki Jennifer Ekiti South 2. The Council of State meeting presided over by President Mahmoud Bari on Friday gave its support to the Naira redesign policy by the Central Bank of Nigeria. The support, however, came with a caveat that the CBN Governor Gordon Mevele made new Naira notes available for recirculate the old to recirculate the old notes to ease the sovereign of Nigerians. The hybrid meeting, which lasted for over four hours at the council chamber's presidential villa Abuja, had in attendance former heads of state and President General Yakub Bugawan retired, General Abdul Salami Abubakar retired, and good luck Jonathan while former President Olushigono Basanjo joined the meeting online. Two former Chief Justice of the Federation, Alpha Algore and Mahmoud Mohammed, were also in attendance. Jointly briefing State House correspondents at the end of the meeting, Governors of Taraba, Darius Ishaku, Lagos State Governor Baba Jide Sangu Olu, and the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice AGF Abu Malami said generally the policy was accepted by members but raised concern about the implementations. Samu Olu on his part said the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Ainek Mahmoud Yakubu, and Inspector General of Police, IGP, briefed the council on the state of prepared preparedness for the 2023 general elections and assured that they were fully prepared. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says it will not accept the nomination of university lecturers who are card-carrying members of political parties. Those who have political leanings or have been convicted of electoral malpractice as returning and state coalition officers in the February 25 and March 11 election, Mahmoud Yakubu, the INEC chairman, disclosed this in Abuja at a meeting with vice chancellors of Nigerian universities. According to him, the coalition of results for the elections will take place in 8,809 registration areas or what? 774 local government areas, 36 states and the FCT that requires returning officers for each constituency. Yakubu for the said the list will be carefully scrutinized and must be submitted confidentially in the manner the Commission prescribes in his letter to the Vice-Chancellor. 
Senate President Ahmed Lawo has said old Naira notes should be allowed to coexist with the redesigned ones. Lawo made a remark while noting that there was no need for a time limit on the validity of the old Naira notes, speaking with journalists after a meeting of the Council of State presided over by President Muhammad Buhari at the State House in Abuja. Lawo said he informed the president that there should be no deadline for the Naira swap due to the impact of Nigerians. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, introduced the redesigned 200 Naira, 500 Naira and 1,000 Naira denominations in December 2022. The Apex Bank said January 31 as the deadline for changing the old Naira nodes. Following public outcry, the Apex Bank extended the deadline to February 10. And on the foreign scene, Ethiopia has restricted social media and messaging platforms ahead of rival planned rallies followed a split in the popular Orthodox Church. The row has caused deadly violence and began last month when some clerics accuse the main church of ethnic discrimination, which it denies. The authorities banned protests by both sides due to take due to take place on Sunday. Some supporters of the main church angrily accuse the authorities of backing the breakaway group. They have vowed online to defy the ban and go ahead with their rally as a show of strength for the Orthodox Church, which is one of the oldest in sub-Saharan Africa and one of the few in the region to exist before the arrival of European missionaries. There are fears of a complete internet shutdown in the coming days. It is a tactic commonly used in the country which has a population of 115 million, though rarely in the capital Addis Ababa, some areas of the northern region of Tigray, where a brutal two-year conflict came to an end in November after a peace deal brokered by the African Union AU remained without access to the internet. NetBlocks, an organization that monitors internet access, says the current restrictions are affecting Facebook, Messenger, Telegram, and TikTok, those with Virtual private network VPN software can get onto those sites, but a total shutdown will prevent that. And in sports, Manchester City have been already sentenced over alleged financial rules breaches since manager Pep Guardiola. The Premier League charged City with more than 100 breaches of its financial rules on Monday. A two-year ban from European competitions for breaching UEFA's financial fair play, FFP. Regulations was overturned by the Court of Arbitration for Sport in 2020. The Premier League has referred City to an independent commission over alleged rule breaches between 2009 and 2018, during which time the club won three of their six Premier League titles. It also accused City of not cooperating since the investigation started in December 2018. The commission can impose punishments ranging from a fine and points deduction to expulsion from the Premier League. City, who were brought by the Abu Dhabi United Group in 2008, said they were surprised by the charge, charges and their innocence is supported by a body of irrefutable evidence. Godiola reiterated that confidence in a different news conference on Friday during which he also said he believes the charges have been driven by rival clubs. When asked if he believed that that was the case. He said, of course, it is the Premier League. I don't know why you have to ask the CEOs. With this story, we've come to the end of our bulletin for today. You can follow us on our social media handles at Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Unity Radio FM TV, respectively. My name is Ruk Ayatsani Ibrahim. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of our programs.